Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the show. Today, well, we have a special one for you, as if they aren't always special. I say that a lot, I know. But today, we have a beta. You guys love it when we do betas, because betas means you get to find out about new stuff that isn't out yet, or it's gonna be out shortly. You excited, Fernando? I'm excited, man. You like new stuff? Oh, I like new stuff. Got somebody hiding in the new back toys. here. Yeah, it's Kyle. What's up? Kyle's from PAC, that means Amp Global. You know what, let's roll the beginning and we'll talk on the other side. Kyle was nice enough to drop us off a beta product for this Dodge Ram. For this, we want to put a new radio in it, and they have a new kit that's coming out. Let me show you what we're going to be replacing. We have this big 8-inch touchscreen, but unfortunately, it doesn't have all the cool features that everybody wants, like CarPlay or Android Auto, and they really want that as a feature. They also have all the air conditionings incorporated into this, and it's, it's just one big piece, and it's not like we can just pull this out, but we can, and we have this product here. The new RP K4 CH 4101, 2013 to 2019 Ram truck with 8.4 inch display. The plan today is to give you guys an idea of how this is gonna work, talk to you about future plans that they have for the kit, and what you're gonna get if you get one of the first ones and all that fun stuff. But let's get it over here on the bench, open it up, and take a look and see what comes inside. Now normally what you'd see in this is a bunch of cables and stuff like that. I have them sitting over on the bench. Let me bring them over here. So first thing you'd find in the box is the RP4.2CH4101. This is the main brain. This is where all the harnesses are going to plug in. This is where you're going to find your controller for the steering wheel controls. And of course a reset button and the USB for programming if you need to do any updates. The main harness that plugs into the car, and here are some of those plugs we were talking about. The main harness that is going to connect to your aftermarket radio. Here's where you'll find all your speaker wires, which we'll talk about in a minute. This is the connector that's going to go from the brain box to the new dash piece. It has a 10-pin plug on each end. And then the camera input for the control center. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Also in the kit, you get this. This is the chime speaker. This allows you to actually have a real chime. It's a speaker and it's going to sound sexy instead of just a yeah. Now the last piece that comes in the box is going to be your antenna adapter. It's a BAA-22, standard antenna guy like this. Plastics. We have the doubled-in trim bezel with side brackets. Ooh, which snap into place, like that. And then for those of you that want to put a singleton in the car, for whatever reason, they have a pocket. And then there's two little foam pouches. These are gonna be for the dash kit, for the air conditioning. Set these someplace safe. They're white, so they're gonna get lost. We're gonna put these someplace safe right now, like my pocket. We have a bag of screws. And we have the trim bezel itself, the dash panel. Look at those buttons. Look how nice those are. Ooh, they feel good too. It's got rubber on it, very nice. So as you can see here, we have the air conditioning controls built into the radio. So we're gonna need to retain those somewhere. We have the seat controls for the heated seats. We have all the vehicle settings that are inside the radio here. And all this stuff has to be retained in the kit. Now, because this is a beta, we have a first run instruction manual, meaning it's it's not finished yet. I mean, at least gets us started and we can give them pointers on things we learned today as far as what they'll need. Inside the owner's manual though, it's going to give you an overview of all the things it's capable of doing. It's gonna give you a parts list like we showed you on the bench, but then we can move on to actual radio disassembly. There are two different center console radio options available for this truck it is going to be the same dash kit but in the instructions they break out the difference so there's trucks with center console and then trucks without center console so make sure you choose which one is yours and follow the instructions for us we have a center console the first thing we want to do is remove this rubber mat down here and then there's a rubber mat right here as well we have a torx here and a phillips here now the torx in this little pocket is in there pretty deep the size torque bit you're going to need is a T20. Now don't put it away, you probably need it for later, but we can take the extension off. Once we have those screws out, there's a shiny trillium bezel around the cup holder here. We want to remove that. This silver trim here, as you can see from the back side, is connected in several different points. So when you're coming at it with your pry tool, try to come in so that you tap into these and that's where you want to pop them. How they've done it is they're just little tiny like serrated edges here that just kind of friction fit in nice and tight. Once we have those removed, lift up the center console. 
pry up the center console. As you can see, they have three metal clips here, three metal clips here, and then one in the very back located here. Take your pry tool and just gently work around the sides. It'll pop right out. Pop that out. And then there's two more T20s located at the top here. Once all those screws have been removed, we can pop the main bezel off. So ours has about seven clips behind the radio. Undo all of those. Okay. To remove the screen, there is four seven millimeter screws. Pull the screen forward, remove the factory USB and all the antenna adapters as well. Once you're done with that, unclip the main wiring harness. It's gonna unclip from the side where the factory USB was. That's why you have to remove that first to get to the clip. And then you just kind of swing it open and then it removes. At this point, you have to kind of qualify your car, depending on year, because of this metal bracket back here. If you don't want to remove your metal bracket or cut it, you're gonna to want to get a short chassis radio, something that's not very deep. In this case, we're gonna be using a ILX W650 Alpine so that it will mount into here and we don't have to cut this bracket. However, if you do want something with a CD or a DVD player, then you are going to have to cut the bracket. Now, the other thing you run into, according to the instruction manual, is what you're your car is if you have a newer vehicle the metal bracket could be a little different and it will have a factory security module that's only available on the 18s and 19s you will have to relocate that down which they do show you in the instructions how to do that there again if you go with a short chassis radio that's not going to be a problem for you you know, looking at the factory, the factory has rubber-ish around their knobs. They've tried to match it as close as possible. These have like this little square pattern here. This has the same square pattern on it. Obviously you don't need these because they're for the old radio. They have similar look and feel to the button structure, so it won't look out of place. And then if you'll notice these, because it doesn't have those, these are gonna be programmable buttons here. Now these buttons are gonna be controlled through the menu on the screen here. This is an actual screen. This is where air conditioning display is gonna be moved to. One of the things that is most important in these cars is being able to play your media in them, like CarPlay, Android Auto, HDMI, whatever it is you feel you need. This is something they're putting a lot of effort into. And let me show you in the truck where you would plug in. In the center console here, pop this up, you have the hub. Now this particular one has an SD card, a USB, and an aux jack, and it's this shape right here. When the kit first ships, it's just gonna come with this right here, which is the standard little USB nickel that we use a lot of the times that comes with this little mount here so you can like put it up underneath your dash. Now this is just going to be a temporary thing because what we have coming are these guys here, hubs. Now they're not gonna be white. These are 3D printed prototypes that we have. And the reason why at release, it's not going to have those in the box is because the kit is done and ready to ship and people have been asking for it. They wanna just get it out for everyone to have if you need it. Adding in the USBs at a later date, you can do that if you need to. If you're doing like wireless CarPlay or Android Auto, then the USB really isn't that important anymore. It's kind of like an aux jack. Like who still uses that? Let me show you how these are gonna work though. The idea is that you take these cables and you slide them into whichever mount that you need. They'll just click into place and the mount will has this back panel. It'll snap into place and then you'll have a nice firmly mounted USB HDMI or aux. No, don't get me wrong. If your radio, like the one we're going to put in this, doesn't have an HDMI, it's not going to magically work. If your radio doesn't have an aux, again, it's not going to magically work. So the question would be, what if I get the kit before these come out? How do I get them? No problem. Inside the box is going to be this piece of paper here. And on it is going to be a URL. You're going to go on to this. You're going to fill out the information, tell it what kind of kit you bought, whether you tell them what kind of kit you bought, in this case, the Dodge kit. And then when this is available, they'll go ahead and ship you the whole set to have installed in your car. So if you're one of those people that wants to get this kit, get it in your car because you're sick and tired of that factory radio, don't worry about it. Go ahead and do it and just be rest assured that once those become available, you'll be able to put that into your pocket. Now that we have the radio out of the dash, we have all the parts explained. Let's move on to disassembling the factory dash bezel and getting our new dash kit in. So going through our owner's manual here, step one is of course get the dash out of the car. Step two is to flip it over and remove all the screws. Step three is to gently lift it out of the dash bezel. And then step four is to safely secure all the screws that you're gonna use because you're gonna retain those and use them on the kit you're putting in. The screws are Phillips. And for that, I will be using a screwdriver. It will take a little longer 
longer, but with just using a regular screwdriver, you don't break any of the plastic. When all the screws are out, flip it back over. Hold this while you're flipping it over. The radio lifts up from the bottom here, and there's an L that goes around here that you have to unhinge. That may take you a second. This is that L I was talking about right here, and of course, there's a couple little extra clips on here, because why not? More clips, that's what we need. Once this is removed, one thing you wanna do is look right here on this. This is gonna be important. Remember those two bags I put in my pocket? That's what those are for. As you can see here, there's nothing in there right now. It's just this empty hole. We're going to take the button that says auto, and that's gonna go into that spot there. Now this has that same hinge on the back of it. Repeat the process. Get it in place. I will dig into my pocket. Find the one that says auto. Now if you notice, this has this really long piece of plastic sticking out here. So if you're gonna be like me and put it in your pocket, don't go sitting down, because you don't wanna break that off. There's a hole that this slides into. Drop it in place. Make sure it's straight. Give it a little push. Then just hit it a few times to make sure that it works. That was a light pipe to illuminate this little spot right here to push the LED light out. Now put your hand back on it, flip it over, and replace all the screws. And that's all there is, final assembly, on the dash bezel itself. And just like we did when we took the radio apart, use a screwdriver to put it back together. You want to make sure you can control the amount of torque into the kit. You don't want to strip the holes or break the kit. If you'll notice on the back of the kit, it has these three plugs here and a USB input. The USB input is for flashing the kit for updates. These, however, are for some pretty cool stuff. The first port here, port one, is gonna be for that cool dual 10 pin plug we had. This is what's gonna plug into the RP4. Snaps right into place like that. The second one, we'll get to in a minute, we're gonna fast forward to the third one. The third one is the camera retention harness. What this has on it is video input and video output and a power and ground output. The accessory wire provides 800 milliamps to turn on cameras. The idea for this is that you're going to plug your camera into here and then out to your radio. What this is going to allow you to do is control the functionality of the backup camera from the display screen if your radio doesn't have the ability to control it. However, this little blue package right here it's going to add a lot more functionality to it. A lot of questions we get are, how do I add multiple cameras? Like on a truck, you want a front camera, you want a third brake light camera, you want a reverse camera, you might want mirror cameras, you might want cameras on top of cameras. So how am I gonna do that? Well, one of the nice things about having that bottom display screen is it has a camera controller built into it. The only thing you have to add, the RPA16P5V. This is a five camera input harness for use with the select Radio Pro integration products. Unplug the little guy that was in there, plug this into place. To control these outputs, you're gonna do that through the main setting on the front. When we power it up, we'll show you how that works. You still have that 800 milliamp output accessory here to power up the cameras. You have, this is gonna re plug into the reverse camera trigger on your radio. Then you have camera one, camera two, camera three, camera four, camera five. And what they've done is if you can see here, they staggered them. So you don't have just like one six inch cable with five RCAs on it. They're all different lakes. It'll make installation and tucking in your dash pretty easy. Plus, they're numbered so that as it gets farther out, this is going to be camera five, shorter and is going to be camera one. Somebody put some thought into it. They actually were like thinking about us, the poor installers that have to tuck all the stuff into dashes. Going back to the second one, that's the expansion port. That's gonna be for future products that are gonna be released later on. They're being very hush-hush about that, but you can guarantee it's gonna be something cool. And once that becomes available, we'll talk more about it. Now also located on the back panel here, down in the lower corner, is your factory plug for air conditioning controls. That's gonna plug right into this. Let's get this radio mounted into our brackets. As we said, we have three piece brackets here. On this, what we wanna do, snap it, break this off. This is for that pocket that we're not gonna be using because we're not putting a single din radio in this. Looking at the side, you can see this little groove right here. That's made to line up with the groove on the bottom of the kit. And then it'll tongue into place. It's not a snap, it's not being held there. So you're gonna kinda wanna do this where you hold them and then have your radio ready to go underneath it slide it over and up in. 
Now don't tighten them in like super tight, just kind of get them in there to where the kit is secured in place. Now on the kit, it has these little stoppers. You can see one right here. When the front bezel meets up with this, these are gonna rest on that front bezel. So you have to line this area here up with the kit so that it all comes and looks nice and sexy. The radio will snap into place inside of the kit. That's what those orange snaps were for. And now we can push the radio into the bezel and get it the right depth that we want. If you remove one torque screw, you can remove the air conditioner vent and that gets you access to your screws so you can tighten them down while it's all assembled. Remove the T20 torques on the other side. It has these little teeth right here. You just kind of lift up these things like this and it pops right out, line it up, and it's mounted in place. You push on it in the corners. You can then remove the main bezel again, flip it over, and reinstall the air conditioning fence. And like I said before, use a regular screwdriver. Put this in a safe location. Speaking of safe locations, for the factory bezel you took out, the bubble wrap bag that the kit came with, with the cool little foam sleeve, slide this back into that. That way you'll keep it from getting scratched and keep it nice and safe if you ever need to put this back in. With the kit knocked out of the way, we wanna move on to the wiring harness. The wiring harness is gonna be pretty straightforward. It has all the same colors that we're used to. Let's dig into it. There's two parts to this harness. There's the part that plugs into the car, and then there's the side that connects to the radio. Looking at the side that plugs into the radio, right away you'll notice it has the eighth inch, which is gonna be used for Alpine, Pioneer, Sony, or anything else that takes a standard eighth inch steering wheel control. You'll find the blue yellow wire, which is gonna be used for your Kenwood or JVC, and then you have a brown wire here. This brown wire is gonna be for those odd, but sometimes used like white box radios. With this installation, we're using an Alpine. We're gonna cap both of these off. Moving on to the harness, we'll select out our speed speaker wires. There's going to be eight speaker wires, a pair of whites, which is the driver's front, a pair of gray, which is passenger front, a pair of greens, which is driver's rear, and a pair of purples, which is passenger rear. There's going to be a solid and one with a black stripe. The solid is going to be positive. The stripe will be negative. There's a blue and a blue with a white stripe. The blue is going to be to turn on the amplified antenna. That's right, an amplified antenna. Because your cars now have these little short antennas, they need a booster built into them. This wire needs to see a 12 volts when the car turns on or when the radio turns on. What I like to do if the aftermarket radio doesn't supply a turn on for this is to connect it with my red wire. The blue white is going to be amplifier turn on. A lot of these aftermarket radios are only there to turn on like 500 milliamps. Some amplified antennas draw more than that and can cause issues when turning on things. Leave this to just turn on the amplifiers and nothing else. You have a light green wire, which is gonna be emergency brake. You have an orange white wire, which is gonna be your illumination control. So that radio will dim down when you turn on your headlights and brighten back up. And you have the pink wire, which is the vehicle speed sense, also referred to as VSS. The purple white wire is going to be your reverse trigger. Now this is controlled a couple different ways. Obviously when you put your car in reverse, this will power up. But if you're gonna be doing a multi-camera switcher, this is what's gonna be used to turn on the aftermarket radio so that you can force in those five other cameras. It'll automatically power this up to do that if one of those is selected. On the harness that plugs into the car, we just have three wires, a black ground, a yellow constant 12 volts, and the red accessory. According to the instructions, this red is a 10 amp circuit. So if you need to turn on some other things, you only have 10 amps in which to do it. The little white plug right here is to plug in that speaker. You have speaker wires located here. This is where this gets kind of fun. On the back of the RP module, you'll notice where it says non-amplified, amplified. That is referring to the car, not what you're doing. If you have a car with an amplified system, you're going to plug it into the amplified. If you have a car with a non-amplified system, meaning it's just radio out to those speakers, you're gonna plug it into non-amplified. What if you're adding amplifiers? 
If it has the outboard amplifier, you're gonna get the wires there. If you have the non-amplified system, you need to hook up your speaker wires here. What that means is that you're going to remove these speaker wires here. You're gonna to have to cut these here. You're gonna connect those amplified output to this. Don't use these wires. You don't wanna pass all that current through this module. That's a bad idea. For us, we have a non-amplified system and we're gonna be using deck power. That is going to plug into the non-amplified input. Our main vehicle harness will plug into the middle and our power for the RP will plug in here. The last plug located here is the expansion port. What that's gonna be used for is that 10 pin harness that goes off to the dash bezel. This will plug into here, and then this end plugs into the dash bezel like we showed earlier. Located on the opposite side is where our out to radio harness is going to plug in. And then you'll notice down here, there is a couple dip switches. In the instruction manual, they give you this chart right here. In this case, we're using an Alpine. We want to flick dip switch one on the rest will be off you may have to flick more than one switch so for example if you're doing a pioneer you're going to flip on switch one two and three now located off of the car side we have a group of RCAs here the first one is going to be the factory reverse camera retention the second one if it has a factory bed camera is also going to be located here the OM the OEM aux audio jack is located here as well as if your car has the rear seat entertainment will all be located in these. If your car is equipped with just the factory backup camera, then the harness that it comes with, this little two guy here, is all you need. Take your reverse camera, plug it into here, then plug this into the back of the radio. If you have both cameras, you're gonna wanna pick up the RPA16P5V so that you can use camera input one and camera input two. That way you can still actively switch between your two factory cameras. We wanna check the back of our truck to see if it has cameras. It does not have that, but it does have the factory reverse camera here. So we can just use the basic camera selector that it comes with. We don't need to add in the extra piece. Since we know what all these wires go to, we can easily connect them to our aftermarket radio harness now and then get this thing into the truck. We're gonna just go ahead and do that off camera and we'll meet you back inside the vehicle. The harness is all set and ready to go. If you have Sirius satellite radio and you wish to retain it, one product you're gonna to wanna to pick up is the SAT-01. This will plug into your mustard color and tin adapter like so, and then you can plug this end into an SVX 300 tuner and you'll have your Sirius satellite radio back once you register that specific tuner. For this install, we're not gonna be using it. We're gonna be using just regular FM. That's going to be this white colored antenna. The maroon colored antenna adapter, it will plug in, but that is not going to be used for this install. You can tuck both of those down into the dash along with the factory USB hub. For USB right now, we're just gonna be using our nickel. We're just going to drape it out of the bottom here for him to plug into until we get our hub in. The ones that we have are just prototypes. Obviously, they're not ready for rocking and rolling. When you go to plug in the main harness, make sure that the little lever is all the way up. Check your pin configuration to make sure you're putting it in the right direction. On this particular harness, there's big pins on one end and skinny pins on the other. Match that up to the bottom here, and as you're pushing it in, work the arm down until you hear a click. Give it a tugging to make sure you got it right. For the chime speaker, we mounted it into the driver's footwell. Plug that in. Make sure all your other harnesses are plugged in. At this point, you're getting a red blinky light and a green solid light. Don't worry about that yet. Set your unit into the dash pulling the wiring harness back out of the way as you do it. Keep in mind, the control panel wire needs to be forward, as well as the camera wire needs to be forward. These two harnesses here. Plug in your FM antenna, USB, backup camera, Bluetooth microphone, pull off the cap for the steering wheel control adapter, and plug that in. The main wiring harness, and if you had the Sirius XM, you'd plug that in now also. Lift the radio into place. There again, make sure you have the front control screen as well as the camera harness out like we have here, and then replace your four screws. Grab your front fascia. Start with plugging in the long cables to short cables. So as you're plugging things in and you're moving things forward, always start with your longest cables out. That way you have the most amount of room to work with as you go. Check to make sure everything is nice and tight. 
The two harnesses in the top here of the dash, as you're putting it in, make sure that the slack is pulled all the way up into underneath the radio. So as you're sliding this up, tuck these in underneath the radio. If they loop down, the kit is not gonna set flush. So don't like start pushing it, hoping that it will. It's, it's not going to. The other thing too that we found is that on the side of the dash here, it's much easier to get the kit back into place if you want to snap and remove these. And the kit will slide in nice and flush once you get those wires tucked up in straight. Turn the ignition on. When you put the kit in, it's gonna take a minute to sync up and do its thing. The radio isn't gonna turn on right away, so just leave the ignition on. The whole boot up process we found takes about a little under two minutes. Once it's done that, everything's gonna work the way we want. If you're plugging it in and your screen comes on, that's no problem, it's just all part of the boot up process. Once you turn the key on and let it sit, it'll cycle through and do what it needs. Just let it do, don't push the buttons, just let it do what it needs to do. You know it's booted up and ready to go when you can turn the key off, pull it out, and you get your Pack Radio Pro that comes on and the screen shuts off. The next step is to go through the setup process and make sure everything works the way we want it to before we do the final assembly of the dash. Turn the car back on. We're gonna go into the instruction manual and go to the setup and testing page of the instructions. This thing does a lot of neat stuff, like gauges and tire pressure and your air conditioning controls. And of course, like we said, selecting those cameras we wanna use. Before we get to this, let's test the radio and make sure it does everything we want it to do via the steering wheel controls. All right, so on this side of the steering wheel controls, we have volume up and down. We have band or source. On the Alpine, it's gonna go through each band as a source. Cycle back around to your FM. We have preset up and down or track up and down, depending on what type of radio you have. Plug in a phone and test the microphone and the phone buttons on the steering wheel control. What's the weather like today? Expect partly cloudy skies. Hey baby, phone buttons are working. We can peel off the protective film. Verify that all your screens are functioning by scrolling through. First one up is your air conditioning controls. Then your camera selection. Right now, since we only have the reverse camera, it's just displaying that. This is our information for our car, such as tire pressure, what gear we're in, and battery voltage. Our gauge cluster, that's right, you can have gauges up at the same time while the radio is doing what it needs to do. And this is your vehicle gauge information screen where you can get best quarter mile, last quarter mile, you know, if you're that guy. Press and hold to upload a custom image. So if you'd like, you can use the USB on the back to upload a custom image. To do that though, the dash kit does have to be out of the car. If you keep scrolling, it'll automatically go back to the main page. So it's a continuous loop through. Now we wanna press and hold the vehicle settings button. Here's where we can set up for our cameras. Camera one is always gonna be the reverse camera. However, now you can scroll up and assign your other available four cameras for a total of five cameras. When you're done, select your back button. To have some fun, we'll assign our cameras. We'll call it a front camera. Now we come up with how do we want that image to be displayed on the screen? And you'll notice while we're doing it, this actually changed over the screen so we can make sure we've selected the right camera. This is where shutting off the cones on the Alpine or any other radio you have would be a good idea because it's going to use the reverse camera trigger to activate the display screen. Now how do we want to activate our front camera? Auto turn on and to drive. That means every time we put the car into drive, it's going to activate the front camera. We'll select on. Next is going to be steering wheel angle mode. This has to do with the angle of the steering wheel activating drive. If we select drive on, we can also further that down. So it doesn't always come on when we put it in drive. It would have to do if the steering wheel is, let's say, straight. We'll turn it on. Speed threshold. This will tell us when the camera will shut off. So if we're going above this speed limit, the camera will automatically turn off. We'll leave it at four miles. Steering wheel angle threshold is now adjustable. So we can pick between 30, 45, 60, 75, 90 degrees and 105. So you have a lot of room there. So you can adjust it until you get it just the way you want. Auto turn on into drive max time. This is how long the camera is gonna stay on for if it doesn't meet the other criteria. We can adjust that as well. So if we don't want it to stay on that long, we'll go ahead and select 15 seconds. Once we have that all set up, 
We'll go back and we have camera one assigned. We'll grab camera three. Now let's look at all the options we have. We have bed camera, trailer bed camera, front camera, left camera, a nanny cam, an auxiliary cam, and right camera, trailer left, trailer right, and on assigned. After you're done setting up the initial settings for the radio, if you tap vehicle settings without holding it, these are all the features that were built in the factory radio are now controlled in this little display screen here. So for safety driving, mirrors and wipers, display, lightings, door locks, engine off options, and auto comfort that are normally in the top screen will all be located down here via vehicle settings. Next up is steering wheel controls. If we'd like to reassign our buttons, or add features, we can do that here. Out of the box, phone, when you press, will answer a call, but it will not end a call. If we hit not assigned, scroll up, and we can select end. Now if we press and hold the answer button, it'll automatically end the phone call. And that's gonna be the long press, and this is the short press. If we screw them all up and we want, we can select default, and it'll go back to where it was out of the box. Update in the middle, that's gonna be for that USB on the back advanced here's your chime volume installer this is giving us information on the status of the car so we have the ignition on right now the parking brake is off turn it on parking brake is on release it vehicle illumination is at 100 percent transmission gear is parked and speed is zero miles per hour button settings this is going to be for the programmable buttons below the screen here it goes one two three, four. HVAC is gonna be first up. We can go through and select specific buttons that we might not have a hard button for, so we can basically make our own custom air conditioning controls. Screenshot, toggle display. That'll allow us to turn off this little display screen here if it's too bright. And we can assign one as cameras, so if we want our front camera to automatically come on. Displays. We can adjust the colors of our buttons. We can change our background if we had uploaded something to it. And then about. So as we bring our fingers up to the four buttons, it automatically tells us what we programmed them to here on the display. This gives us the option to tap it on the display, show front camera, or we can physically just hit the button and it'll do the same thing. Now that we have all our settings the way we want them, let's get out of this screen and get into something nicer, like the air conditioning screen. Here, we can hit select auto. It'll bring us up to our normal setting, whatever auto was. Select our AC. Select recirculate. We can adjust our temperatures here as well as make them adjusted separately so it retains your dual zone air conditioning controls. Select sync and it'll automatically sync those back up. If you have seat heaters, they're controlled from here, on, off, cold or hot. This would be your heated steering wheel. We scroll over, we can select our reverse camera. We can select our front camera that we don't have a camera hooked up to. When you're done viewing it, go ahead, tap it again and it will turn it off. Start up the car. Let's try our front camera. We'll test our front camera while in drive. Hold it right up. That'll stay on for 30 seconds. The camera will go off once we hit four miles an hour. Select reverse. As you notice, the box around the reverse camera will appear as well as it'll show on the display screen. One other thing we wanna check while we're in the camera is making sure that the chime works for the backup sensors that are displayed in the gauge cluster. And they're doing exactly what they're supposed to do. Now that our truck is started, we can see that our battery voltage has jumped up. We'll change our gear. We have reverse, neutral, and drive. And our tire pressure has stayed the same. If I want to change my temperature while I'm in the gauges mode by simply pressing temperature, it will display a ghosted image inside. This is just the passenger. If I come over and select driver, it will just display it on the driver. If I'm synced to both, it'll display the temperature on both sides. If I select auto, it will do the same thing. So it doesn't matter what screen I'm on, bring those features up and then fade away. Hazard button works. Now that we've validated that everything works, we can go ahead and get the center console put back together. We hope you guys enjoyed this first look at Pack Audio's new kit for the Dodge Ram. RPK4CH 
4101. This was a beta kit, so there are still a couple bugs to work out, but this is definitely going to be neat. If you get one of these, make sure you do the registration to get the hub. That's about it. It's a pretty sweet kit. Fit and finish, phenomenal. Good job, guys. Fernando, on to the next one, guys. You guys have a great night as always. We'll see you later next time. Bye.